We have some good external storage options for your Mac from Orico. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So today we got a good one. So we have two different external storage options for your Mac. And we have different price points, different speeds. One of these things is gonna be probably the fastest I've ever tested so far, especially when I show you a video of some other guys' tests as well. So if you guys love external storage for your Macs, so you need something that's actually pre-built for you already, sit back and relax. We're gonna get into both of these options right now. Let's go. Okay, so option number one is right here. This is gonna be a really, really fast solution. So of course you can go out and build your own external SSD drive. You can get the enclosure, add your own SSD, but this one comes pre-built. And this one in particular is two terabytes of actual storage. So pretty big, right? You can get this, I believe, what does it say? One terabyte and four terabytes also. So there's different options for this one. It's really, really fast though. And we're gonna talk about that here in a second. Now it does have some cost to it as well. So let's go over here and take a look at Amazon. So the two terabyte version that I have sitting right here, this is gonna be 249 bucks, all right, for two terabytes. And we'll get into the speed. It's claiming up to 3,700 megabytes per second. Think about that, that's really, really fast. Is it true though? So you can see here, now this is going to be a Thunderbolt 4, so you really have to test with Thunderbolt 4. It's backwards compatible to Thunderbolt 3. So what I did is I tested it on an M1 uh, iMac sitting over here and an M2 MacBook Air over there, but it wasn't really true Thunderbolt, which I'll get into in a second, but it was still super, super fast. So you can see in here, the one terabyte down here is 169 bucks right here, and then I think it's uh, four terabytes is 399 bucks right here, all right? Now this thing's going to be good for a couple things, which we'll get into in a second, but I'm testing this one. This is the only one I have, and this is a two $249 option. So it's kind of expensive, but at the same time, you don't have to build it out yourself. And if you look over here, so if you wanted to go ahead and build something like this out yourself, take a look. You can buy the enclosure from Oroco. It's going to be very similar to the one we have here. 80 bucks roughly. You can see it sitting right here. So you're going to get into about 80 bucks for that. And then you have to know enough just to buy the right SSD. Let's just assume you buy this one, two terabytes, the SN770. It's going to cost you 120. So you're probably in like 200, 225 if you do it yourself or 249 if you have it pre-built. So that's kind of the difference there. But this comes, you know, without a lot of the headaches of building it yourself, right? And you don't have to worry about, you know, all the things that go into it. Are you cooling it correctly and things like that? So beyond that, that's really what I wanted to show you there. All right, so the test I'm gonna show you now, well, we'll come back to this, but this has actually got, let me actually go through the actual build quality of this. So now it does have an aluminum frame around it, and I'll show you kind of close-ups as I'm talking about the unit itself. So the outside is all aluminum, but the top and bottom, I think they're plastic. I'm not sure, it's hard for me to tell. I think the top and bottom are made out of plastic, but around it is all aluminum. And up here at the very top up here, there is actually a fan up here. And this fan basically, there's no, it, it, you know, it, there's basically cooling on both sides. So the air gets sucked in, I believe, through this side and it comes out this side. I don't believe there's any holes in the top of it. It's just really kind of, it shows you where the fan is up here. And the weird thing is, is there's a light up here. It's, it's basically, you know, an LED light or RGB light or whatever you want to call it for gaming and stuff. And it kind of flashes. Now, there's no way I can tell right now to turn this off. So you're going to have to like that. If not, I believe since it's not really sucking air up here, you could potentially just put a sticker over it or something to hide the, the flashing light if you don't like that. And like I said, it's, you know, a lot of gamers might like this because you can run games off this. But if you don't, I think you can put a sticker because I don't think there's any air going through there. It's basically closed off. It just looks like it's kind of there, but the fan's actually underneath there, which we'll get into. So there's, there's what I want to show you with this. So it's kind of a pretty good build quality there. Sorry about that. Um, the cord itself also, it comes with a cord and you can see the length of it right here. And then it's USB-C on this side. On this side, it's USB-C, but it, you know, it's got a little dongle here that can go to USB-A as well. So you can connect it to various things, but you do need to go into Thunderbolt 4 if you want the fastest speed, right? That's really important here on this, this enclosure. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and just show you what Blackmagic shows me on this, and then I'm going to do a real speed test with some real data, and then we're going to come back and talk about it. So the very first test is going to be actually on my system right here, and let's go ahead and take a look at this. Here it is. It's 3,100 on the writes, 20, almost 2,600 on the reads, and it says 3,144 on the writes, and then on the reads, almost 2,600. 30, what is it, 3140 on the rights and then 2600 roughly in there. So that's gonna be on the system I have sitting right here, which is an M1, this is basically an M1, obviously iMac, and so it's a little bit older iMac. Now, granted, this doesn't have pure Thunderbolt 4 ports, it's got like Thunderbolt 3, I think, on it. So you right, may not be able to get the best speed on it. So I did try it on my MacBook Air as well, so take a look over here. Let me bring this up here, and then we'll show you this, this as well on the MacBook Air sitting right here. All right, so on the MacBook Air, here's a test right here. It's very similar. I got 3136 on the writes, 2664 on the reads. 
Again, 3140, very, very similar on the writes, and then the reads 2655, somewhere in that range. So I tested both on these two systems here, and you're getting really, really consistent speeds there. It's really, really fast, right? Now with those really fast speeds, one thing to note though is these things don't have true Thunderbolt 4 on them. So if you look over, and this is a page from Apple, identify your ports on your Mac. True Thunderbolt 4 only comes with the 14 inch MacBook Pro, the 16 inch Mac, MacBook Pro introduced from 2021 or later, the Mac Mini 2023 or later, Mac Studio 2022 or later, or the Mac Pro 2023 or later. So what I have actually is Thunderbolt USB 4, which is actually like closer to Thunderbolt 3. It's still 40 gigabit per second ports, but it's just not, I guess it's, it's I don't know really the huge difference. USB 4 is so close, but I'm not giving it a true test, even though I was able to get those really, really fast speeds. So you definitely can't connect through like a, you know, you don't want to disconnect through a 10 gigabit per second port. You're not going to get anywhere near these speeds. You got to connect to at least to a Thunderbolt or USB 4 and hopefully a pure Thunderbolt 4 port if you have it. So, and, and you know, I, I don't have the actual 16 inch or 14 inch to test, but someone online does. So here's a, this is actually on the at Oracle's website here. This is uh, from Fire. Firewolf Tech, I want to give them credit. Check out their YouTube channel. This is one test they did. He's using a 16-inch MacBook Pro. So he does have the test with pure Thunderbolt. Now watch this test right here. I'm going to click on this and let it go. Look at he's getting over 4,000 on the writes. He's getting less on the reads, which is weird, 23, 27. But 3,800 on the writes there again, 30. He's getting like around 3,800, and he's getting a little bit slower, 2,300 on the reads there. So you can see it there. So overall, I thought that was really interesting that he's doing that. All right, now we wanna move 100 gigabytes of data and we'll do a real world test here. Take a look at my screen over here. So what I wanna show you is I have 100 gigs of files here. I'm gonna move it over to the Oracle two terabyte drive there. This is a real world test, so it's not gonna just be black magic, right? Does this thing get hot? So I wanna just show you in here. So what I have in here, I have a whole bunch of files. They all total exactly, I think it's like 99.99 gigabytes or 100 gigabytes just about on the dot there. And we're just gonna drag those over to the actual Oracle. See, and we're gonna time it right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click start here. Now let's let this thing go for a second. So it's gonna run a little while. I'll do this one in real time to show you. Look at the speed of this thing. See it up here? You can see at the very top here, it's moving already. It's, it's around like 30 or going up to 40 gigabytes transferred already. And you can see the time down here. The time is actually only at, what, 15 seconds now, and we're through almost 55 uh, gigabytes of data that it's moved. So it's moving, and you can see this is a full 100 gigabyte test right here. And let's just see where it's gonna finish out here. So depending on how long this takes, let's just give it a little bit longer here. We're only at 28 seconds, so I'm going to stop it as soon as this, there we go, around 30 seconds, 30 seconds, you can see it right there, 30, you know, a little, little more than 30 seconds. So that comes out to like 3,300 megabytes per second right there. So you can see it's actually even faster than it was showing in Black Magic, or very, very close there. So you tell me, I guess, at the end of the day, it seems like it's, you know, in between that, you know, those big numbers there, and it works really, really well. Okay, and one thing to note too is as far as the case, after transferring all of that data, the case, you know, with the fan moving, now the fan's going to give you a little bit of audio and it's going to give you some noise. It's very, very faint, but it's just enough to you'll hear it a little bit, right, when it's on. But at the end of the day, it does keep it fairly cool compared to like the enclosures you make yourself that really heat up. It might get a little bit warm, just a little bit, but it's not going to get boiling hot. And that's a huge key here as well. So anyways, at the end of the day, I think the fan really works on this thing. And, you know, you guys can see what it's doing here. So that's that's kind of a bonus there as well. Okay, so now the second product I wanted to talk about today is also by Orico, and they call it the Orico One Terabyte Magnetic External SSD. You can see it right here. Now the beauty of this thing is it comes again pre. It's, it's got one terabyte built into it. You know, it's a completely already built SSD for you. You don't have to put your own drive in it, and uh, it is magnetic. So what it basically means is it's made for your phone, but it can do a whole bunch more. So you can see it here on the back of an iPhone uh, that has USB-C. You need USB-C. You can go ahead and use the magnetic connection. Look at that. It sits right on your phone just like that and won't fall off. Then you can plug it into your phone. So if you want to do like, you know, recordings and raw and all that stuff on your iPhone, this thing's perfect. It's also got a little magnetic strip like this. It's got some adhesive on it that you can put on other devices like, you know, iPad or something or a case or a case of your phone. And this will actually, you know, connect to it magnetically as well. So that's kind of what that does. But beyond that, there's a lot of other things that this can do. I mean, obviously you can see it's $109 for one terabyte. It's uh, for two terabytes, it's 199 and for 512, it's 69 bucks. So it gives you additional storage for like an iPad or for your phone, it works really well with. And you can see in here that they show some of the pictures in here. Let me just click on a couple. You can see it's on the phone here. They have it on an iPad here. They have it with their MacBook. And that's what I'm gonna show you in a second. But you can use it with all these different things. Obviously now, the, it says it's plug and play right there. Let me just keep moving into some of these pictures, but you can see how it connects right there magnetically. And uh, now what it comes in the box, it comes with basically a little bit different setup here. This one actually has just a really, really short, um, because it's made for your phone, cable here. 
but I kind of like it. So if you're traveling and you just want it for your MacBook or something, that short cable works really well. And, uh, and really, it comes with that little magnetic ring, and that's about it, some direction. So it's really easy. This one, I don't know why, but this one actually did come pre-formatted as XFAT, and I just left it as XFAT because it works basically on the Mac and the PC, or Windows, I'm sorry, Windows PC. So overall, I just left it as XFAT. This one was already pre-formatted. The other older one I showed you earlier wasn't for some reason, but you guys get the idea that you just have to format it. Now, the one thing about this one is they claim this is up to 2,000 megabytes per second, all right? That's what it says, but there's a couple things that we wanna talk about about this. Okay, so if you have like a Windows machine or something that has basically what they call, it's called USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2, see it there? Then you can possibly get up to that 2,000 megabytes per second. Now, I don't actually have it to test. I'm testing on Macs, we're a Mac channel here, so we don't have that, I mean, Macs don't really have that built in, but how fast can it get on a Mac? So I'm gonna show you the speed test on Blackmagic, then we're gonna transfer some files and show you how fast this thing is, and we'll talk about it, is it worth the cost after we do that? But you can see that, you know, this is what it's saying, it's 300 times faster than a lot of these enclosures, um, two terabyte, up to two terabytes. I have the one terabyte version here, and they're showing that it can connect to a whole bunch of different things in here, you can see there. So you get the idea, you get all the idea behind this, but let's just see what this actually can do now on the tests. All right, now let's just test this on Blackmagic on my iMac setting right here. Let's go ahead and give it a test. We're gonna go ahead and click this. You can see it's 1368 and a half basically on the writes, and then on the reads, 853. We'll let this run one more time. 1485 on the writes. And then on the reads here, it's about 852, all right? So that's right there. Let's Now let's move over to the, that was on my iMac. Let's test it on the M2 MacBook Air next, running through there, and then we'll come back and show you the results. All right, here we go. This is on the Air right now. You can see it's 1618 on the writes, and on the reads, it's 925. So again, it's about 1627 on the writes, and then on the reads, it's about 925 right there. So overall, you get the idea there. Now, it's kind of interesting to me. Now, when I started testing with Blackmagic, I just want to be fully, you know, full disclosure. In the first couple of tests, it wasn't as fast, but then I consistently after that started testing up in like the 13 to 1500, but that's Blackmagic. So there's something going on where it's, I don't know if that test is super accurate because we don't have two times two, right? We only have, you know, it, it shouldn't be theoretically maybe that fast with the Mac, maybe on a, on a computer that has has that connection, it might be. So I wanna do a real world test now, moving data to see how long that takes, and it'll give us the real idea of how fast this thing really is. Okay, so here on my screen here, we have the 100 gigs of data. Once again, I'm gonna go ahead and move it over to the Oracle Drive and start this up. So again, this is not gonna be as fast as the last one we saw, obviously, because it's, it's you know, I, I, even out of the box, it's a half or a third the speed. It's also a half or a third the cost as well. But it's still gonna be pretty fast as we're gonna find out here. So we're doing the 100 gigs here. I'm gonna skip ahead to the end of this video because this is gonna be way too long. So I'm gonna follow up, just I'm not gonna have everybody wait here. Let's get to the bottom of it and we'll come back. All right, we're almost done now. You can see right on here, it's at 147, 148. Let's just see here. So about 150, 150 to do 100 gigs. So that's a minute and 50 seconds. So what does that come out to? Like 110 seconds roughly. If you divide that by the numbers, I roughly, I can't calculate that out to about 950, somewhere in that range, 930 megabytes per second. And that's actually really good. Now, even things like the Samsung, like the Shields and stuff that are out there, they're usually only good to like 150. In fact, let me go ahead and pull one up over here. There it is right here. So here's the Shield right here so you can see the shields that's only a, you know it's going to be about 150 bucks um, but this is about 10 1050 megabytes per second and, and that's this is obviously for the two two terabyte version so if you click on this this is going to be the one terabyte version let's just see what this loads in as about 109 bucks so obviously let's just go to the magnetic one over here now so we're talking roughly the same cost right there and i think we're going to get a little bit faster speeds i've tested the samsung one and then anything that's like basically a gigabit per you know 10 gigabit per second enclosure like those are you're probably going to get like somewhere 800 to 700 when you get you know consistently when you're trying to transfer that much data all at once 100 gigabytes this one actually consistently held you know pretty strong at almost a thousand megabytes per second which is pretty crazy and uh you know overall you just can't complain with it so i mean i think it's you know for what it is it's really made for your phone and, and moving that data back and forth but even using it on your computer it's i think a solid choice as far as you know what you're doing at least initially right um it's just something that you have to, again, we have to test it longer term, but overall, it performed really well in that 100 gig test. A lot of these things get hot, they slow down. This never really did at the end of the day, and it kept that consistency. You could see it in the, in the results there up to that, uh, you know, 950, somewhere in that range, megabytes per second. 
Oh yeah, and one last thing too on the build quality of this. Now this actually, this enclosure itself is not made out of metal. It is plastic shell, just to let you know that as well. But overall, I mean, it is what it is. It's very light, it's very easy to travel with, and you'd put this in your bag and go to the coffee shop or something, and you'd have that, you know, something for data that you'd want to transfer at that thousand, around thousand megabytes per second, which is, you know, good enough for almost everybody out there. Let's just be honest, right? Okay, so we're gonna wrap up the video. At the end of the day though, these are pretty good products, both of them, at least in my initial testing. But like I said before, this is really just a product showcase. This channel's all about, let's put some stuff in the comments. Comment if you've used these, let me know your questions and we'll talk about them. I mean, I haven't done long-term, I can't tell you if this is gonna last you know, six months or a year or two or three years, I have no idea. I haven't done you know, full, huge throttling tests on these things as well, so. But that's what this community is about. Post in the comments and we'll all figure this out together. But I just wanted to give you my initial showcase of these new products that are coming out here. And so far, I mean, they seem very, very quick for what they are. The costs seem on par with everything else that's out there. So it's just another option for your external storage for a Mac. And obviously these would work on PCs as Windows PCs as well. I keep saying PCs, but Windows PCs because it's the same thing. Um, but you get the idea. They'll work on both, but I'm just more of a Mac channel. So we'll talk to everybody in the next one. Until then, peace.